What a great day to be in the parks. This is a special time of year when frogs are calling from the vernal pools, birds are building their nests, and the first spring wildflowers are just starting to bloom. When we think about biodiversity, we might picture far away places with tropical climates, but there's so much biodiversity we can appreciate right here in the Washington DC area. Hi, I'm Jackie Rayford and I'm a park naturalist with Montgomery Parks. I'm here today in Cabin John Regional Park in Bethesda, Maryland, practicing for the City Nature Challenge. Anyone can contribute to this important community science project without even leaving their own backyard. So let's head down the trail and see how it all works. In this video, you'll learn step-by-step -step how to record observations of wild plants and animals using the free iNaturalist app in time to participate in this year's City Nature Challenge. Have you heard of the City Nature Challenge? It's a worldwide community science event that focuses on the wild plants and animals that live in our urban landscapes. By contributing to this BioBlitz, you can help scientists learn more about the wildlife in your neighborhood. Each year, community scientists around the world compete to make the most observations of wild species for their metropolitan area. Community members from over 400 cities participate in the challenge each year. Washington, D.C., with an official boundary that includes the District of Columbia, as well as several counties in Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia joined the challenge in 2017. Since then, the community has worked together to find an amazing amount of biodiversity. As I'm walking the park today, I'm using iNaturalist to record the plants and animals I see along the way. Alone, my observations might not mean much as I can only be in one place at one time. But when hundreds of us join together and record observations all over the region, we create a snapshot of our local landscape in this moment in time. Scientists use the data collected in iNaturalist to conduct important ecological studies. Right here in Montgomery Parks, our staff uses information collected by community scientists to monitor changes to our plant and animal communities, such as tracking the movement of invasive species or the recovery of rare or threatened ones. As the climate changes, the snapshots that we create during the challenge help us monitor changes to plant and animal communities over time. My observation is just one piece of the puzzle, and that's why I need you to join me in being the eyes and ears for our scientific community. Participating in the challenge couldn't be easier. Simply go outside and find a wild plant, animal, or fungi. Snap a photo with your phone, then upload it to iNaturalist via the web or through the iNaturalist app. Ready to try it for yourself? I'm going to show you my favorite way to use iNaturalist for the challenge. I'm using an Apple phone, so if you're using an Android system, you'll have all the same features, but it may look a little different. When I'm ready to make an observation, I first take some photos using my phone's regular camera app. This gives me a chance to review the photos find the best ones, or even retake photos as necessary. After I'm satisfied with my photos, I open the iNaturalist app and choose the Observe button, which looks like a camera on iPhone or a plus sign on Android. iNaturalist automatically opens my phone's camera, but since I've already taken my photos, I'm going to choose to upload them through my phone's camera roll. Choose the best photos and add them to your observation. Now iNaturalist will prompt me to make an identification by asking me, what did you see? If you're not sure what the organism is, iNaturalist's artificial intelligence will make some suggestions. My advice is to choose an identification that you know. If you didn't know, for example, that these were Virginia bluebells, 
you could simply identify it as plant. Now that I'm comfortable with my identification, I check that the date and location are accurate, then I choose share. My observation was just uploaded to the database. Over the next few hours, other iNaturalist users will review my observation and my identification for accuracy. Once at least two thirds of the community agrees, my observation becomes scientific research. I love how easy it is to make observations right through my phone. But if you prefer to use a computer, you can upload your photos instead by visiting iNaturalist.org. Now that you know how to use iNaturalist, let's discuss the guidelines for the challenge. Collect your observations in the field during the observation window. Remember, this is supposed to be a snapshot of this moment in time, so you can't use photos taken in the past. Make sure your observation includes a location and identifying evidence, usually in the form of a photo, but you can also use an audio recording. You must use iNaturalist, either through the app or on the web. By using iNaturalist, any observation you make in the DC region will automatically be submitted to the challenge. Please use ethical practices since you're working with living things. Don't pick the flowers, try not to accidentally crush the bugs, or get too close to sensitive species. And don't forget, you must be at least 13 years old to have an iNaturalist account, so parents should work together with their children. One thing that's not required, knowing the names of the plants or animals. The iNaturalist community will help you identify what you find. Let's talk for a moment about what to look for out in the field. Any wild living organism counts. This includes mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and insects. But it also includes plants, fungi, and even slime molds. Unfortunately, your pet rock does not count. You can take a photo of the actual organism. But in some cases, you can also submit photos of the telltale signs animals leave behind, such as tracks, scat, feathers, or nests, when those signs are indicative of one particular species. Remember, this challenge focuses on wild plants and animals, but sometimes it's hard to know what is considered wild or not wild. We call non-wild organisms captive or cultivated. One way to think about it is, if a human put it there, even if it's a native species, it's not considered wild. That includes the plants you find in gardens, the animals you find in zoos, and your domestic pets. You may still submit observations of non-wild organisms. Just be sure to tag it as captive, cultivated in your observation. Where should you go to make your observations? You can always visit your favorite green space, whether that's a local park or a schoolyard. But don't discount downtown areas. Sometimes you can find the most surprising things clinging to the sides of buildings or growing between the cracks in the sidewalk. And of course, it's always fun to look for creatures in your own backyard. And if you choose to upload an observation made at home, Change the location of your observation to obscured to protect your privacy. This means that other iNaturalist users won't be able to see an exact address. And wherever you go, make sure to put your health and the health of your community first. Take precautions to stay safe. So I hope you'll join me and thousands of others in our DC area community for the City Nature Challenge this year. It's a great way to hone your observation skills, spend time with friends and family safely outdoors, learn more about your favorite plants and animals, and contribute to important scientific research. It's also a lot of fun. So I challenge you to find as many plants and animals as you can. Here's how to get started. Download the iNaturalist app and set up your free account. Then take a walk outside to make your first observation. To see the dates for this year's challenge, learn about events near you, and to find additional resources, please visit us at citynaturechallengedc.org.